Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, now we are going to prove that uh, the direction of acceleration must be towards the main position. Means that if the body goes like this, the direction of acceleration must be like this. If the body goes like this, the direction of acceleration must be like this. If the body goes like this, the direction of acceleration is like this and so on. Uh, there is no evidence in your book. Uh, what I will teach you is only with the basic concepts, clarity of the basic concepts of physics can you help you out. You must know that if the speed of a body like this, if the this is the initial velocity and if it is the final velocity, it means that it means that the velocity of the body is increasing and not increasing, it is only the speed which is increasing. So the force must be towards the direction of the velocity and the acceleration must always towards the motion of the body, if this is the case. The second case is that <coughs> you have learned it out in the class 9, in the case of um, kinematics, that if it is the initial velocity and if it is the final velocity, it means that the velocity of the body is decreasing due to the decrease in its speed. So, in this case, the force must be opposite to the direction and the acceleration must be opposite. And this acceleration in physics is called deceleration, retardation or negative acceleration. In this case, when we are driving a car, we are accelerating, pushing an accelerator down. And in this case, when we are driving a car, we are pushing the decelerator, which is the brake, down. So, speed is decreasing, so the force must be opposite. And now what you can say? Here your acceleration is maximum, but velocity is zero. And here your acceleration is zero, but velocity is maximum. So from here to here, your velocity is increasing, so acceleration must be towards in this direction. And from here to here, your velocity is decreasing, acceleration is decreasing, velocity is decreasing. Acceleration is increasing, sorry. Acceleration is increasing, but velocity is decreasing because mg sine of theta is there. I'm not showing it. mg sine of theta will be, this is mg, this is mg cos theta, and this is mg sine of theta. So mg sine of theta is there. Brakes are being applied on the pendulum, and its velocity is decreasing. And there, velocity is decreasing, so the force will be opposite to the direction of motion. Direction of motion is there, force will be here, deceleration will be here. So in this way, we can show that the acceleration is always towards the main position. So we have shown here that the number one, and you can see that it is a vibratory motion, to and fro about the main position, very easy. I'm not giving emphasis on that. It is a vibratory motion to and fro about the main position, and the periodic motion makes a motion as vibratory and we have again have shown that the acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the distance of the body from the mean position and we again have shown that the direction of acceleration is so we can conclude that the motion of a simple pendulum is essential here comes a very vital point and what is that? There is a confusion to his students that how we will manage that here our acceleration is maximum but velocity is zero. And here our acceleration is zero but velocity is maximum. Very the students do not understand this idea completely, so I will try my level best to show it to you that when the acceleration decreases, the velocity increases. And when the, trying my level best to show it, 
this is a simple pendulum this is its mean position and to show the extreme position i will make it extended here this is one of the extreme this is me what i am going to show it to you that as the f i as i move from here to here my acceleration decreases but my velocity increases how can i manage to understand that okay, my acceleration is decreasing acceleration is nothing but the rate of change in velocity so my rate of change of velocity is decreasing but my velocity is increasing is very uneasy idea to digest i will try my level best here on the downstream i will write down acceleration and on the upstream i will write down the velocity so very from here to here you will check it out as i will leave this ball say its acceleration is maximum that is 5 meter per second square 5 meter per let's assume that and when i will ask you what will be the velocity you will say definitely she is going to start from rest so it is 0 meter per second because the body when the body start from rest its velocity is zero acceleration is maximum which is g sin of theta pi meter per second square what does it mean it means that there will be a change in velocity of 5 meter per second in one second and i will take the minimum interval of time as 1 second so it means that if you just divide the time into 5 seconds 1 2 3 4 this is 1 second after 1 second what will be the change in acceleration say 4 meter per second square say 4 meter per second so if i ask you okay what was the velocity here you will say 0 meter per second what will be the velocity after 1 second you will say yeah 5 meter per second in 1 second so here your velocity will be 5 and here your acceleration will be 4 i am not writing down the units to confuse you it is the velocity why it is 5 because we have assumed that okay, as i leave the pendulum its acceleration is maximum which is 5 meter per second square it means that for one second the chain will be 5 so the chain will be 5 but as the ball move towards this position theta decreases this theta decreases so the acceleration decreases i am as i have explained it earlier so assume that the theta acceleration will be 4 meter per second square and now what the tendency shows it shows that this acceleration is 4 meter per second it will decrease 4 meter per second in 1 second so it will be if it is 5 here velocity and then the change is 4 then 5 plus 4 is 9 meter per second and what will be acceleration here you will say definitely it will be decreased why because acceleration as you have told you i us uh, that acceleration is if the theta is decreasing so is the sin theta is decreasing so is the g sin of theta so is a so let's assume it is 3 here always assume that these are accelerations these are velocities and what i am going to show that acceleration is decreasing but velocity is increasing what does this mean it means that in the next one second there will be a change in velocity of 3 meter per second in a one second so it is 9 here and there is the change of 3 is here so it will be a 12 meter per second here and so on. and if i i assume the same idea the acceleration will be 2 here because of the decreasing in theta in unit in equal intervals So two means two meter per second in one second. So it will be fourteen here, fourteen meter per second, and acceleration will be now one meter per second square. Acceleration. What I have tried to teach you in this article 
that you must clear yourself. Do not confuse yourself. The, yeah, the acceleration is decreasing and the velocity is very simple to understand that. One meter per second and one second means 14 plus one is 15 meter per second. So 15 meter per second is there and you know that what will be here. It will be zero. Why it will be zero? Because theta will become zero and when theta will become zero, sine of zero is zero and everything is gone. So your A is zero. So your A is five here and your A is zero here. And your V is zero here and your V is 15 here. So remarkable to understand that as the theta, uh, acceleration is decreasing, velocity is increasing, no confusion about that. And in the same scenario, when you will just cross it, the same idea will be there. Your acceleration will be there as the theta will produce, but your velocity will decrease because mg sine of theta will be here and it will going to retard the velo uh, velocity of the body. So this was the idea that as acceleration decreases, velocity increases. This was a good idea to learn. I have taught you because this type of articles are not being addressed in the book and now in your exam there is a conceptual answer can be there. In your books, the time period of a simple pendulum is given. And the time period of a simple pendulum is nothing but have a small simple pendulum having a length L. So the time period for this simple pendulum is 2 pi L over G under the root. And you may analyze this that the time period of a simple pendulum is directly proportional to the square root of the or need of a square root to the left of a simple pendulum it directly means it is upstairs and since g is downstairs so it is inversely proportional to g as the length increases time period increases as g increases time period decreases in your book the Proof of this is not given and I am also not going to prove it because in first year you are going to learn that there are some technicalities in which you cannot understand that. So I, understand, I hope you, you will just take it. If the length of a simple pendulum increases, there is a term in the physics for second pendulum. I hope ke आपके यहाँ ये बिल्कुल इस्तेमाल नहीं हुआ। एक ऐसा पेंडुलम जिसका टाइम पीरियड टू सेकेंड्स हो। एंड आई विल गिव यू एन असाइनमेंट एट होम। आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट। टेक दिस फॉर्मूला। t इज़ इक्वल टू टू पाइ एल ओवर g अंदर द रूट। पुट t इज़ इक्वल टू टू सेकेंड्स। फॉर सिंपल फॉर सेकेंड पेंडुलम और सेकेंड पें 2 pi L over G and now what is this? You know all. You know 2, you know 2 pi, you know 9.8. So what you can do? You can find the length of a simple pendulum. And now when you will do it at home, you will find that this length is approximately 1 meter. So second pendulum, second pendulum is a pendulum whose length is 1 meter or whose time period is 2 seconds. If one of them is given, you can find the others. If you put here 1 meter, you will find this as 2 seconds. Very easy. You can practice it at home and you will find that this is. How can we find a time period of a simple pendulum? We will prove uh, here that the time period of a simple pendulum is directly proportional to the length. It means that when the length increases, the time period increases. When the length decreases, the time period decreases. And the time period of a simple pendulum is inversely proportional to the acceleration due to gravity. It means that when the g decreases, time period decreases, and vice versa. It means 
when G decreases, increases, the time period decreases. I will note down two examples in front of you. First is this and the second is this. The time period of a simple pendulum, which is 2 pi L over G under the root. If I increase my length, this one, as four times, means if I increase my length L dash as 4L, then what will be my time period? My time period will be definitely change. It will be 2 pi L dash over G. And L dash is nothing but 4L. So what will come out next? This 4, square root of 4, is 2. So I can write down it like this. I have shortened down the steps. You can calculate it out by yourself. And what is this? Nothing but T. So when I, sorry, when I increase my length of the symbol pendulum four times, I will increase my time period, new time period, as twice of the first. And similarly, when I will decrease my length, the time period can be decreased. You can calculate it out on your notebooks number of times to make you more clear about that. What next? Number two, the time period of a simple pendulum is inversely proportional to G. Means as G will increase, decrease, say decrease, because when I am standing on the earth, please keep it in mind, when I am standing on the earth, my G is maximum, which is 9.8 meter per second square on the earth. And I, if I go up to a height h, your teacher had told you what will happen. G will decrease. And when G will decrease, your time period will increase. It means that when I will go to the moon, my time period, my G will decrease. So my time period will increase. I will just show it to you. Uh, one thing more. When I go inside the earth, the idea is very clear. You will think that your G will increase. Never think about this. Your G will decrease again. So, on your earth, on the earth, on the surface of the earth, your G is maximum, which is 9.8. On the other planets, the G are different. And I think your GM on the moon is one and six times on Earth. Six times smaller because the moon is much higher from the surface of the Earth. So when you will go up, G will decrease. You have learned it out. What I am going to do is really beautiful. Not in your books. But I am going to compare my time period on Earth and on the surface of the moon. I am not going to compare them by the variance of the length. I will keep my length same. There is a pendulum. On earth, what will happen? On earth, my time period is 2 pi L over G, where L is the length and G E is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. What will happen when I will make this pendulum move towards the moon? This should be T E. On T M, 2 will remain the same, pi will remain the same, they are, they are constant. I'm not going to change the length, but only factor is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the moon, which is approximately, not exactly, six times lesser. And now the idea arises. Put this gm six times smaller than the g. 
GE by 6. What will happen? G will go upstairs. G will go upstairs. 6L. Very little bit of mathematics. And then 6 will come out as under root 6 into 2 pi L over GE. A wonderful idea. We have seen it before. What is this? The time period on the surface of the earth. And if you calculate it approximately, it will be 2.45, roughly 2.5 of TE. Wow. It means that when we take the same pendulum on the surface of the moon, its time period will be two and a half times more than the pendulum on the surface of the earth. It means that if there is a pendulum whose time period on the surface of the earth is two seconds, say second pendulum, then on the moon it will be two and a half times two times of two of a half second and what will be that? I think five seconds. The pendulum which is having two seconds time period on the surface of the earth will have five seconds slow. Slow. More times means slow. On the earth it will be two seconds. Look at this pendulum. One, two. And the same pendulum having the same length when it will be located on the moon it will be like this. 2.5 5 seconds slower and being slow down is natural according to the physics as you lose your chi the gravity or the acceleration due to gravity you always fall or move with a small one. therefore you have seen the astronauts moving like this on the moon and the air on the earth gravity is more so you move like this very simple to understand I hope you will understand this, you will repeat it again and again and you can consult <coughs> the school about any problem addressing this lecture. Hope for the best for all of you. Thank you.